you first as, as far as yeah let me uh, let me back up and preface that for the recording uh, so what we want to address here is the training portal we introduced um, many of you to the training portal on past webinars with a thorough introduction but uh, a lot of folks as you're getting your teachers in are, are wondering uh, how to get started with training uh, what makes sense to uh, start with and so I just wanted to give everybody uh, another chance to see those resources so uh, here I'm logged into canvas in my help menu uh, is uh, the training services portal so all uh, teachers should have access to that uh, the, the training services portal that will open up the training services portal here uh, and what I would recommend that you recommend to your teachers would be to start with the k-12 first day ready course um, you'll be able uh, i can preview that or i can go ahead and enroll directly into that um, but we'll first start um, by just taking a quick preview this is about four hours of content some people are wondering about uh, providing uh, some continuing ed uh, credit hours uh, through your pd department uh, if you're interested in doing this successful completion of this course is about four hours uh, you'll be able to as an administrator track completions and have a little bit more insight into the trainings that your teachers are going through through the training portal so if you're in that position of feeling really anxious wondering what resources you should provide your teachers first i would highly recommend just going right to the training portal it's turnkey you don't need to register anybody for anything you don't need to modify the content in any way i just have them come right into the training portal and certainly get started with this pathway uh, and then they can kind of choose their own adventure from there uh, as I uh, come back into the training portal, uh, we kind of describe this like the Netflix of training. So uh, you can see that once I finished the uh, K-12 First Day Ready course, there are lots of additional, 18 additional courses here for me to choose from. So that's all I have, Dominic. Rachel, we did have a couple of questions about the training portal. I think I answered one of them. Uh, Jeremy said he didn't see any live trainings on the training portal. Uh, that's going to be enabled soon for all of Virtual Virginia customers, correct? Yep, that's correct. They're not there yet, but they will be there, uh, you know, as we proceed through the implementation phases. Perfect. And then Lisa asked, is K-12 first day ready equivalent to growing with Canvas? What's your take on that? It is. Yep. So the way that I would describe the differences between those two is Growing With Canvas is a great uh, course if you at your division want to customize your training at all. If you want to uh, use the Growing With Canvas course that brings that into Canvas, allows you to maybe remove some modules, add some items to it. You know, if, if you're in a position where you're really comfortable with Canvas, you're comfortable with facilitating uh, a course inside of Canvas, go ahead and use that Growing With Canvas course if you have an idea of how you would like to run uh, a training at your division. If you are feeling overwhelmed and you're just looking for a turnkey solution to get teachers started, I would direct them to the training portal. Thanks, and Tate is asking, um, is the training portal available now? It is. If you have a Canvas environment, uh, it's available. As we've just said, some of the more the live trainings aren't there quite yet, uh, but everything that I'm looking at or everything you're seeing on my screen uh, is available. I'm going to follow up with a question. Does somebody have to be enrolled as a teacher in a course in order to access the training portal? Yes. Uh, so if they, it's for the same um, process for having access to commons. Um, but uh, I think we've provided some instructions on creating those sandbox uh, courses. So if you don't see the training portal, just make sure on your dashboard you click on the button to start a new course. That will allow you to become a teacher. If you don't have the start a new course button, um, 
you know, let us know and we can provide instructions on how to enable that. Perfect. So that's the important thing. You've got to be enrolled in a course as a teacher in order to access the training portal. Once you've got that step accomplished, then you, you should be able to jump into this K-12 first day ready course and, um, and really get going with that. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to introduce your staff to Canvas in a kind of a hands-off, uh, touch-free way, like Rachel said. So that was the kind of big update and share that we wanted to uh, push out to everybody. Now it's the rest of the hour is yours, our friends in the Commonwealth. If you've got questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat or you can um, grab the mic and, uh, and share out that way. First question, uh, Kathy asks, how will we see the virtual Virginia courses once they start get, getting made available tomorrow? Um, those courses are going to be in the Virtual Virginia um, Consortium. Rachel, is there a way for you to, to show how to access that? Yeah, I can uh, show how to access that. Uh, and the other caveat that I wanna provide is it we're usually adding people to the consortium at the conclusion of implementation. Uh, if we need to work harder, I can work um, with Josh and Jaren uh, to help them get some of those enabled. Um, but there's a possibility that not, it's not a possibility, it's a fact that not everybody currently has access to the consortium. Um, but here in Commons, uh, the way that you would access it, um, and I'm, I'm, I don't have access to the consortium, this is a demo environment, just so everybody knows but I will point out where it will be. So you'll click to filter here on the right hand side uh, and where I have this that says State of West Virginia repository, you would have a selection for Virginia uh, DOE as well as um, Virginia Public Schools, I believe is um, what the other one is called. So that's what you would have access to. Uh, and again, like I said, we're usually adding those at, um, during the implementation process. So depending on where you're at in that um, phase would depend on if you have access to it. It doesn't mean that we can't provide access earlier though. I wanted to tag in on that. Um, sure. Just kind of disagree with you on that. Um, anyone who needs that, especially with the content I believe is rolling out tomorrow is the first official wave. Um, feel free to message the inbox. I'll be monitoring those and I feel pretty comfortable knocking those out pretty quickly. Perfect. Awesome. Then we have a question from D. Clement. Does it matter what course you set up for the teachers? Like if I import all teachers as teaching a section of the Growing with Canvas class, uh, that makes them a teacher in Canvas and then they'd have access to the training portal. Um, depending on how many teachers you're talking about enrolling in a, one particular course, it may be a little bit messy, but it is a, that's a fast way to kind of knock it out and get everybody enrolled. Rod asks, to access Commons, one must be an instructor in a course, correct? Yes, either an instructor in a course or an admin in the instance. Students uh, cannot access Commons. Um, or I should say, people that only have access to Canvas as a student cannot access Commons. If you, for some reason, made a student a teacher in a course, they would be able to access Commons, but don't do that. Um, let's see, Kathy asks, if you download the mobile app, what do we need to do as an admin to make our school visible? That's a great question. Yeah, that is a great question. Uh, and I am assuming she means uh, searching for the school. So that's something that uh, does need to get added on our side. Uh, so go ahead and again, message us on that one. Again, these are some of the things that normally happen during the implementation phase. Uh, and you know we're still in the middle of implementation, which is why some of you aren't seeing that yet. Um, but similar to Commons, if that's something you're anxious about, go ahead and communicate that to us. There is a workaround. You can search for your instances oh, sure. URL. Yeah, um, you, you can certainly just go ahead and uh, uh, instruct people to use the URL. The other option is uh, the QR code login doesn't require uh, the need to enter anything at all. Uh, and so 
uh, here on my account uh, here, I have a QR for mobile login. If I'm already logged in uh, to Canvas here, uh, it'll initiate uh, a QR code here for me. I can scan that from the app without needing to search for my school or enter the URL and it'll log me right in. But it is kind of fun to see your school division pop up in the yeah. Canvas app. So we'll make sure that that happens for folks. Um, Lisa asks, why are some of the Virtual Virginia courses not going out until next June, like English 910, but 1112 are available this summer? Well, that is a great question for anybody on the line from Virtual Virginia, because I cannot answer that for them. Let's see, I'm scrolling through to see if anybody is on with us. I don't see Nate, I don't see Sarah, I don't see Brian. All right, well, we will send that message off to Virtual Virginia so that they can respond to it. And uh, perhaps when we send out the um, recording link, we might be able to have an answer for you. All right, Joy asks, I am enrolled in the VISTI course on Canvas and they made a sandbox course for each person in the course. Does this mean that I'm an instructor and should be auto added to the consortium? Side note, I can't ask the sandbox course as an instructor uh, and put in a help ticket a day ago, or do I need to somehow add myself to a course as an instructor? Uh, yeah, Joy got you access. She can't access the sandbox as an instructor. Um, the the thing that I would suggest is that every Canvas instance is different. And so if you're in VISTI's Canvas instance or Virtual Virginia's Canvas instance or in your own division's Canvas instance, your access is particular and specific to that instance. Uh, and so if you're doing, if you're wanting to access the training portal from your division's instance, you have to have a course where you're a teacher in that instance. Um, uh, Joy then asks, uh, how can I access my division's instance? That is a question I will punt to Rachel and, uh, and, what, and I'll further ask, what is your division? And then maybe we can give you an update. Uh, Rockbridge County, do we know where Rockbridge is at in their implementation process? And while you're Responding to that, I'll uh, answer a couple of other questions. Jamie asks, can we share content in Commons just for our school division? Some materials are copyrighted and only available for our schools. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there are many levels of Commons from an individual's Commons where you just share with yourself to your school division Commons where you would share with anybody within the instance. We've set up a consortium in the Commonwealth to where you can share across divisions. And then there's the global commons where anything that you publish there would be accessible to anybody uh, that has a Canvas account around the world. Rachel, did you wanna share um, anything about Rockbridge County or, or Josh, did you have anything to share about Rockbridge County? Um, yes. So looking at Rockridge, it doesn't look like Joy was in there as an initial admin. So um, if she wants to just email uh, her name and um, I guess her name and her email is really all I need to get her started, I can add her to Rockridge. Perfect. Uh, Kathy asks, how can we toggle Mastery Paths on as an admin? It's grayed out on our Features Options tab. Rachel, do you want to tackle that? That is interesting that it's grayed out. It shouldn't be. Um, let me just, again, knowing the uh, account would be helpful. Um, let's see, Kathy, what, what um, Bedford County. And then Josh, can you prep us with uh, an update on the status of Surrey County? That's in there. And then Lisa asked about looking, um, how, how do those levels of commons look? Do you wanna share, Rachel, how when somebody goes to share to commons, they can choose which level of commons they're sharing to? Yes, just give me a second here. Will do. Uh, 
and I see a lot of these status requests rolling in from everyone, I'm going to say that probably the easiest thing for you to do would be to reach out to VBA help at instructure.com and then we can report back to you specifically uh, exactly where you're at and you know what we may be waiting for or you know why we're not a little bit further along in the process we are working with a lot of your tech directors or other or other technical specific people to be able to get you connected to power school and, and different things like that so um, if you've got a contact that you know is working on that i would i would recommend reaching out to them first that way we don't get hit up by a whole bunch of people that you can just be able to reach out internally about that um but yeah, uh, every one of these we've actually been working specifically with somebody at this point. So if you can reach out internally first, that would save us more time, be able to keep, continue to allow us to be able to work on people as they come in. Thanks, Jaren. Yeah, that's a, a great point. Sometimes we do have points of contact within the divisions that kind of know where everything is at, but uh, they're, they become the, the holder of all of the information and if they're not letting everybody know internally then it's uh, you feel like you're not being communicated with where we feel like hey we've been talking to this person for weeks and weeks about where, <laughs> where we're going so uh, definitely reach out to some of the tech directors because they've been the ones making the, the technical connections um, but you know from the academic side as somebody that came from that side of the house I always like to make sure that uh, that uh, things were moving smoothly along as well. So we're happy to do that. We've got, um, it looks like Sarah from Virtual Virginia is on um, with us now. So we can probably circle back to some of those VBA specific questions. Uh, Sarah, there was a question a little bit earlier from Lisa about why are some of the Virtual Virginia courses not going out until next June, like English 9 and 10, but 11 and 12 are available this summer. Thank you for asking that. Um, there are courses that are going through the revision process and uh, according to where they are in the writing process and the curriculum development, they won't be available for export um, uh, for, from Virtual Virginia to share. We do have some resources that we can make available for English 9 and 10, but uh, that needs to be done through the bulk enrollment process. So there are some resources available, it's just that they're not available for export. There are a couple of other resources um, Spanish 2, 3, and 4, and there are a couple others listed there that are not available for export, and that's due to the terms of use for the courses themselves. They, they, there is content there, but it needs to be accessed through the bulk enrollment process. And I'm going to put my email in the chat just one more time so it pops up for everyone in case you have specific questions. Feel free to follow up with me. Thanks, Sarah. Rachel, I think I threw a thousand things at you to demo for people. Do you want to take it take it away for a second? Yeah, I think um, where I'm at is showing how to share into a division only uh, commons environment. Uh, so just so you're aware, uh, objects can be shared into commons at the course level, the module level, assignment, assessment, file. Um, so they, things can be as um, broad or granular as you would like to share. Uh, in this example, I'll just demonstrate sharing a specific module. So I am sharing the unit one module of a physical science uh, course. And I've got an option here to share to commons. And this is what will uh, allow me to share this content out. So I can share with just my division. And so that's where you would select all of uh, church county public schools or your county public schools in your case. Um, as a part of the project with Virtual Virginia, there is a consortium that you'll be able to share if you want other divisions in Virginia to have access to this content, but not make them necessarily publicly available to every single Canvas user. Uh, now, I'm understanding the specific question came up about copyright, so in that case, you would keep that private to your division. But there might be times that you want uh, to share outside of that. Uh, Commons also does allow for groups. Uh, so if you wanted to organize some of your users into PLCs or other kinds of groups uh, to share content only within those groups and not necessarily division wide, that's also an option uh, with the groups functionality in Commons. Uh, and then we do have a, the ability for you to tag something uh, as a template or an open textbook. Again, I know that that's not the use case that was specifically asked, but it's important to know that if you're building a K-12 
K-5 template for your elementary teachers uh, that is going to be, you know, division specific, you'll want to toggle that on. That'll allow for easier searching by your teachers because uh, they have the option to filter by um, content type, as you can see here. Uh, what kind of license? Um, by default, we use the most restrictive one uh, that helps to protect you. But if you need to open up the licensing there, uh, then to you know the public domain or Creative Commons, then you've got that option there as well. Uh, and then simply, you'll need to um, provide a title as well as a description. You're welcome to tag things. Again, that's really for uh, searching capabilities. Uh, Commons does require that you have an image associated with a piece of content that you share, um, but we do make it uh, easy. So we do have an integration with Unsplash here. So if you don't have uh, an image handy, which we wouldn't expect in most cases that you necessarily would, unless you're um, maybe a content designer, then you can simply just go ahead and select one of those stock images. And then finally, what grade levels is this piece of content appropriate for uh, and you can select a specific grade level or a range and then finally you would share this content and based on who you have shared it with those users will be able to search and find that content was there anything else that you asked me to demo that I've now forgotten 15 minutes later no uh, possibly toggling on mastery paths and in, in, in the admin settings yeah so um, let me see here. If it's grayed out, we may need to um, investigate that a little bit further. Um, but generally speaking, if you come to the admin, and based on this person's question, I'm guessing they found themselves here already. Uh, but for the benefit of others, uh, we can take a look at feature options. Uh, it's worth knowing that Canvas releases updates every month, um, but just because we release an update doesn't mean that it's uh, immediately available to everyone. Um, it, it can be available to everyone, but we let the administrators of the Canvas instance make those decisions. Uh, small updates are obviously fine to release on a rolling basis, but um, recently, we uh, updated our gradebook. That would have been very overwhelming if all of a sudden in the middle of an academic year, your teachers had a brand new gradebook. Uh, so we use feature options as the ability for you as an administrator to control the release of our updates that happen on that monthly basis. Uh, as well as just configure your individual environment and deciding what kinds of features you want uh, to use. Uh, and so Mastery Paths is a feature here that uh, can be toggled um, in the allow state or the on state. The difference between allow and on is on, you're turning that uh, feature on for everybody's course. Allow is allowing your teachers the ability to turn a certain functionality on. The Learning Mastery Gradebook is a perfect example of that. Some of your teachers may want to do standards-based grading, but if you're not a standards-based grading division, uh, maybe it's not a requirement that you turn that on in all grade books. Uh, so that's, that's just an option. Now, if, if this is grayed out and you don't have the ability to uh, make uh, a change here, um, please let us know that's something that we'll need to work on on our side. Uh, I haven't seen that happen before, but uh, if, if that is the case, then we'll need to resolve that for you. And I may have misread the question or, or misinterpreted it. Is it possible, Kathy, that you were referring to turning it on in a course and it was grayed out? If that's the case, if Mastery Paths is turned off at the admin level, then it would be grayed out in the courses. So your admin would just need to toggle that to allow or on uh, to enable it in, in all the courses across your division. Hey, so this is this is Kathy, and it is grayed out on the admin root account screen. It is huh. not you can toggle it to allow or on. Well, we're gonna need to take a look at that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see, I'm scrolling through to see where we're at. It looks like there was a couple of questions for Virtual Virginia and Sarah answered them. 
a bunch of questions about getting updates and we told you to reach out to um, VVA help at instructure.com. Um, Jamie asks, some classes offer buttons at the bottoms of screen like the physical science class. Do teachers need to create the buttons themselves or are there templates? Um, generally, teachers are creating those buttons themselves in third party software, things like Canva, not related to Canvas, but Canva has a great online like uh, button creation tool. We do have some templates available where there are uh, buttons included. Uh, the thing is those buttons are images, right? And so the images would have the text kind of hard coded into them. So they're, the text wouldn't be editable. So if you brought in one of those templates, you would just um, you know, kind of be beholden to the text that's on those images. But we do have some templates available in the commons that you can take a look at. Um, Kara asks, will each county district use a specific link or just the regular Canvas link? Every county will have its own Canvas instance URL. Um, and that's mainly because of the way that we've architected Canvas to make sure that your data stays in one place, that it's not being uh, commingled anywhere else. So it's a, it's a, a huge re rationale around data privacy. So you're gonna have your own URL, but it's also because every single division has perhaps different ways to authenticate into Canvas and things like that. So we manage that by giving everybody their own URL. But it does cause some confusion sometimes when you're dealing with the VISTI instance, the Virtual Virginia instance, your instance, uh, you know, the free for teacher instance. Um, sometimes it's hard for folks to kind of wrap their minds around all of these different uh, implementations of Canvas that they may have access to. Um, let's see, where do you go again to access the K-12 first day ready course, Kara asked. Uh, we can show you that again. It's probably not a terrible thing for us to review it a couple of times today. Rachel, do you want to click on your help button so we can show Kara how to get to the um, subscription training portal? Yep, so just help right here. Uh, and you will be selecting on the training services portal. And then you'll just scroll through and look for one of those, um, you'll look for that K-12 first day ready course and yep. you'll be off and running. Maria asks, uh, do we have the option to turn off the gradebook feature if we're not using the pass back uh, and having teachers use our own gradebook system? You can't turn the gradebook off, but you can hide it so that your students don't have access to it. Um, we have to have a place for grades to land just in case at some point you wanted to use grade pass back, but um, Rachel can show you how on a per course basis we can disable the gradebook from the navigation so that your students wouldn't have access to it. Yeah, there's something else that I'd just like to add to that conversation, though, um, is there's going to be a ton of feedback that uh, your teachers will have the ability to provide students. Uh, and a lot of feedback is delivered through the gradebook. So the course total grade can also be turned off on a course by course basis. So um, I would just caution you against turning off um, you know, the grade navigation in Canvas because uh, that's also a way that a student is going to be able to understand if an assignment is missing, that's where they'll go, um, they, they could feasibly go through that navigation to submit an assignment. Um, so I, I just point that out because there might be other functionality that uh, you get through the grade book that isn't necessarily about just informing a student what their grade is. Yeah, to piggyback on that, uh, thank you, Rachel, for reminding me. We, we do see in a lot of K-12 institutions where they turn off that final grade book grade in Canvas because you have some external SIS that houses the, uh, you know, kind of the source of truth for grades. So providing students access to kind of a assignment by assignment grade book makes more sense to have it in Canvas where that final grade will live in your student information system. So it can work together um, kind of seamlessly there, but it's, it's easy enough to disable the, um, the grade book navigation if that's the decision that you want to do. Um, Rachel's gonna show you right now where we can hide that total. So that can be hidden. 
I would personally recommend that avenue versus uh, removing the grade book altogether. Um, but because you deserve options, if you want to remove the, the link from the course to uh, have students not see their grade book at all, uh, then the way that you actually customize this era area of a course is in the course settings. There's a tab for navigation and I have the ability to disable any of these items. Uh, so these are the navigation items that only students see. Uh, the teacher still has access to everything you can see uh, through this symbol here. These are the items that are not visible to students. Uh, so if you want to disable that, you're welcome to. Um, but you know, just keep in mind that you would be that some students would be losing some functionality and productivity tools by not having access to their grade book. All right, a couple of questions about standards in the VVA model modules. I think Sarah answered those. If if not, throw it out at us again, and we'll make sure and address it. Uh, Melissa mentioned that the uh, ability to toggle on uh, mastery pass was grayed out. Uh, in their division as well. So we, we may want to take a look at the divisions to make sure that we've got that uh, enabled across all of that, or at least set to allow. Um, uh, let's see, Erin wants to make a blueprint course for their educators to basically copy as it stands. They have the sandbox accounts. Can she begin to build the blueprint course in her sandbox and then link that to the live account that she eventually has access to? There, that, the, yes. <laughs> There are lots of ways to um, move content around in Canvas and we can absolutely um, give a quick kind of lesson on what we call push, pull, copy. Uh, there's ways for us to manage that content and for you to do it kind of at, at scale in the division. So I'll turn it back over to Rachel as I read through the rest of these questions. Yeah, I just want to make sure um, I'm understanding. Uh, Dominic, can you read the first part of that question to me again? Yeah. Um, she wants to make a blueprint course for educators to copy. And I think that really where, where that is leading me, at least okay. in my mind, is to create a course in commons for them. Right. To okay. Learn. All right. So let, let, let's, though, have a discussion on the difference between blueprints and commons. Uh, so um, blueprint courses is really an administrative level tool for you to push content to teachers. Uh, so uh, here I have my physical science blueprint course. Uh, and you can see that this particular course has been developed as a template of sorts. So I, this is a course that I'm going to push to teachers so that when they log into Canvas for the very first time, they don't have a blank Canvas. Um, they have a, a, a template to work with. So as a recipient of that, of this blueprint, I can simply just click the edit button here in the top right corner add my course description, add my video, um, and then we can even, in addition to just that homepage, of course, be delivering uh, content. Now, this content could be templated content, right? So this is a course that's being distributed across maybe an entire grade level, you know, even maybe the entire division. Um, but it can also be content specific. So this is an example of pushing a physical science course to all of the physical science uh, teachers. And then I can then, of course, take this template and push this to everybody who teaches physical science, as um, you can see here. The benefit of this is I can be, I can make modifications to this course and then sync those uh, updates out in real time. Um, so that is blueprinting. Uh, it could absolutely um, be leveraged right away. We do tend to see blueprint as a functionality that maybe happens, um, you know, after the first year of use, you know, once everybody is kind of comfortable, uh, there's certainly a time component, right, of building these courses and pushing them uh, to the right uh, teachers, but it's an incredibly 
impactful tool for uh, particularly your curriculum teams to be able to build uh, consistent courses and create equity across the district. So this is the push method. If you want to just push a course to a teacher. Now, while if, you're on blueprints, Rachel, there was a question from Jamie again. Um, if a teacher created their own content and then the division pushed out a blueprint, does it erase the teacher's work? It does not. So there are lots of rules involved um, in the updating of blueprint content. And uh, so they're nuanced. So let's say a teacher made a change to this assessment. It would, when, it, when this original assessment gets modified and then pushed out again, this teacher would actually receive a copy of the new version of that. And then the teacher would be able to decide to continue using uh, the course that, or the assessment that they've been using, or maybe switch students over to that copy. Now, you can also lock certain components in this blueprint, which would prevent the teacher from making any changes from that assessment in the first place. Um, there are also uh, use cases like if students have already submitted to those items, um, in which those, in those cases, we would then send a copy as well. So the easiest way to think about that is if no modifications have been made to a resource, whether edited by the teacher or due to student submissions, then we'll uh, replace it. If there has been some editing on that item, then we'll send a copy. Okay, so that is the pushing of content to teachers. Now, if you want teachers to simply be able to pull a course or a template in, it's that same process of sharing to commons, except I imagine the use case that you're describing is to share the entire course. So if I go to my course settings, which I just did quickly without saying so, and then I click share to commons, I can now take this entire course, share that to Commons, then teachers will be able to go into Commons, find that course, bring that course into um, their course, uh, make and make any modifications that they want to that. So that is what we would consider the pull method, right? So a teacher goes in, searches for content, and then pulls that content into their course. So blueprinting doesn't require an opt-in on the teacher's part. Uh, that content just gets to them, but it is a, a larger lift on the administrators to be ready um, with that content and have content that's ready to be pushed to the teachers. And then, you know, commons is a little bit more work on the teacher's uh, part, um, but it's, it's probably um, less of an administrative uh, workload up front. Awesome. So we've got a couple of follow-up questions from Maria back to the grade book, and I think she, she figured out the answers as we were talking, but let's just address it. If we hide the grade book from the navigation bar, uh, parents also would not be able to access that, correct? Right, so uh, parents kind of follow the user permission of the student. Awesome. Um, her concern was not seeing grades in the grade book weighted properly. Uh, do you wanna talk a little bit about assignment groupings as a way to kind of reflect what's going on in the student information system? Yeah, we can handle that, but again, let's not forget that course total grade is going to resolve those weighting issues mm -hmm. um, for us as well. Uh, as I come back into my course here, um, and I go to assignments. <clears throat> I do, and I'm not sure that I actually have that enabled in this particular course. So my uh, assignment groups that I have here, uh, I can choose to wait. So all of the assignment groups, you can see that I have far more assignment groups in this particular course than you would typically see, but I can go ahead and add uh, percentages to those categories in order for uh, the grade in Canvas to um, 
hopefully reflect that of the student information system. But again, turning off the course total grade uh, is really the best way to avoid any communication and make people aware that the SIS is the source of truth. Perfect. Um, a couple of questions about, uh, and this is kind of a question for the group at large, are most of you giving your ITRT's admin access? Uh, Rod followed up with, are there differing admin roles, super admin, user admin, course admin, those sort of things? So I can answer the roles and permissions question from a uh, Canvas perspective. And then uh, I don't know if maybe folks want to use the chat to kind of uh, talk about you know, what is being done internally. Um, but I'll just start with permissions here. So um, by default, there's really um, one account admin uh, role. Uh, account admins can, however, be added at the school or sub account level. So if you just want somebody to have uh, admin access over a specific school, they can be added uh, at the school level. But then I can create uh, custom roles with the specific uh, permissions that I want uh, those roles to have. So you can see here, I've got my account admin, but I also have a principal role and I have a school counselor role. Uh, those get easily added just by clicking this add role button. I can name that role uh, and it provides it here. So this allows you to do uh, things like uh, allow principals in this case to create global announcements for their school, um, but maybe you don't want principals managing CIS data. Uh, and so you would ensure that that was uh, kept off. So once you have identified the permissions that you want these uh, roles to have, you can then add them again at the root account or the district level or the uh, school level. Awesome, I think that answers that. <clears throat> so you certainly can, Dan, um, permission an ITRT over the school and give them the, exactly the right permissions that you want so that they can have the specific uh, role that they need um, accomplished there. Um, Lisa asks, can I import questions from a Google Form quiz into assessments in Canvas? Um, there isn't a migration from Google Forms to Canvas quizzes. Um, you, you could certainly create those as assessments uh, with a uh, good old copy paste, um, but there is not a migration tool that will automatically convert a Google Form into a Canvas assessment. Yeah, unfortunately, Google Forms doesn't um, subscribe to the IMS global standard of QTI. Otherwise, we would be able to move that content around. But um, we're, we see a lot of folks that take those Google Forms and recreate them in Canvas for sure. Um, let's see, Pat asks, after pushing out a Blueprint course, does it automatically appear on the Canvas dashboard? Um, does this create the sections of the course with student enrollment? I think that's two separate questions, perhaps. Blueprinting doesn't create courses. Blueprinting moves content from a Blueprint course into an already generated course shell. Um, and so the, the only way to create those course shells is via sys provisioning or, or manually. Um, once the empty or slightly used shell is, is there, you can Blueprint content into it. Um, generally speaking, as far as the second question goes, does the SIS create the sections of the course with student enrollment for the teachers, which they can then link the courses into sections in one course? You want to talk a little bit about how we move courses out of SISs into Canvas and what people can do to kind of combine them or as we call it, cross list them? Yeah, I'm actually going to just uh, make sure, uh, I think. I'm going to have Jaron answer this because I think that we have brought them in cross-listed already. Jaron, oh. can you confirm that for me? So depending on what kind of sys integration you have, um, uh, depending on which integration you have, it's going to be set up as a one-to-many setup or a one-to-one -one setup uh, where the 
the the cross listing won't actually be necessary to be able to do. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that for every single one of them. Um, but we have done it for every single power school one at this point to be able to do that one to many setup. Um, where I, I believe every other sys other than power school we unfortunately don't have that ability at this point. Um, to be able to do that one to many setup. Okay. With multiple periods within the same course. Yeah, there, there are so many Virginia divisions that are using power school that unfortunately sometimes I default uh, to um, power school when I'm thinking of uh, something. So for those of you who have power school, if you are teaching the same course multiple times a day or have multiple sections of that course, then you're going to have periods. periods. Yep. Thank you, Jaren. You're going to have that one course on your dashboard and then you will have um, your sections or your periods of students underneath that course that will allow you if you need to modify a due date for one period of students. Um, you can do that, but then you're only having to manage the content from one place. Now we can share the instructions for you to uh, cross list your courses um, for the other SISs uh, yourself. So if, if that's a user experience that you want to have um, for the other SISs, we can um, provide instructions on uh, how to manage that. Unfortunately, as Jaren said, we're just not able to do that automatically uh, when we provision initially. All right, James asks, how can we add co-teachers to courses? That's a pretty simple one. Um, yes, so you would uh, just come to your course here. You, you'll, if you're a teacher, you'll have, um, them on your dashboard. I'm uh, logged in as an administrator right at the moment, but as soon as I get here, uh, that won't matter. Uh, and then you will use uh, the people menu here on the left-hand side in your course. And then you can simply click to add people. And then uh, here, you all you really need to know is uh, your co-teachers, usually just their email address. Uh, I uh, you, you may know their login ID. In most of your cases, they're actually one and the same. Um, you would just uh, enter that and then uh, you would add them as a teacher uh, and just, you know, confirm that you want to add them. Perfect. Jay asks, how do we change a person's role or permission? Um, there, I, Rachel touched on it a little bit earlier. There are two kind of role, roles that are scoped. There's the course-based role where you're a teacher, a student, an observer, um, and then you would just be able to change that within the course if you're the teacher. Uh, then there is the account level role. And so the permissions there get defined in this admin uh, panel that Rachel has up underneath permissions. We don't really change an individual person's permissions, we change that role's permissions. And so if you happen to be a principal and we have that role scoped out, we can change every principal's access by uh, editing the permissions associated with that particular role. Um, and then how do we actually put people in as admins? That might be an interesting thing for us to show. Sure, yeah. So if you want to add somebody as an admin right now, I'm at the district level. I'll come to the settings here. And I will come to the admin. And this is where I would add uh, an account level role. The other thing that's uh, worth knowing is this is where I'm going to say, you know, are they an account admin or am I giving them permission as one of those other custom roles that I've created? Uh, also keep in mind that we can do this at the school level. So if I come to my sub accounts here and I go into a particular sub account, so this is a school within my uh, division, I can then come to the settings here and just add somebody as an admin at the school level 
And again, maybe this is a principal, I would use their email and add them at the school level rather than the division level. Awesome. Aaron asks, um, will Sandbox accounts link to the real account? Your Sandbox courses, as long as they exist in your division's instance, are real courses. They just only have you enrolled in them. And so anything that you build in your Sandbox course can be moved into the live courses that get provisioned from your SIS. Um, so you're not going to lose anything. Uh, we don't delete anything from uh, on the Canvas side of things. Uh, so anything that you build will be able to um, be moved over into the live courses. So feel free to go to town. And even if you're not in your, you are in your instances um, or in your division's instance, you can always share something to Commons or export that and bring it in to your instance. So there's there are ways to move content around across divisions within the division from one you know from user to oneself or from one user to another user there's very easy ways for us to move that so have fun build be ready be prepared and don't worry that stuff will be able to get into the live course when it's time um dana says that divisions are having issues with the power school integration the sif agent isn't working correctly she's not to that point yet but others are having problems we're aware, we get the emails um, from people, we're investigating uh, what might be going on with the SIF agents. We don't have uh, answers for everybody yet. We're kind of tackling that on a, uh, on a one by one basis. But in some cases, it's making sense to um, roster using other methods, uh, at least for the short term, uh, as we work through these problems going forward. Anything else that anybody wants to add there? Yeah, I, th I think maybe we'll, if, if Jaren's up for it, maybe uh, clarify. I think we're only aware of one instance uh, that uh, we uh, decided to go a different um, method. There are de certainly nuances to every specific implementation we have implemented successfully so far uh, dozens of divisions uh, via SIF without any issues at all. So uh, it's not a widespread issue. Uh, it appears to be uh, uh, on a case by case basis. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, missed, I missed the very first part of that question. Uh, there, there's just some concerns. Uh, some people are having issues with uh, configuring their SIF agent. Uh, sure. And uh, I was just clarifying that um, it, it's not a widespread issue. I think we've only identified uh, one that we decided to go a different direction on, but otherwise we've had success with, you know, dozens and dozens of divisions not having any issues at all. Yeah, um, the, the power school SIF is not unique only to virtual Virginia. This has been set up across um, statewide across, or sorry, not statewide, but nationwide um, for many, 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 many different schools. I would say at least 400 plus that have, that have done the same process to be able to have it up and running and functioning. So um, obviously there's different levels of, of things to be able to look into. Um, whether it's locally hosted or power school hosted uh, seems to be kind of a contrast to be able to have some of them work a little bit easier versus the other ones. Um, I don't have an, an all an end all if it's if it's functioning 100% perfectly for everyone at this point, unfortunately, um, every single one of them is a little bit of a case by case basis. Um, unfortunately, it is it is power school <clears throat> specific SIF agent. So I don't have all the answers on it either. Uh, we do have some specific directions about how to be able to connect and some specific mappings that we need to be able to connect to it as well uh, to be able to provision correctly within within canvas um, and yeah i i've i've worked with this kind of setup for nearly three years now um dealing with these all, all these kind of issues and problems so um unfortunately there's a unique one that comes up almost every time we do something like this so i can't give a solid answer unfortunately I think it's important for, for us to communicate that we're committed to making it work, right? So however we have to get this done for you, we will put the work in to uh, fix it short term and long term as best as we can. And so when, when we do run into these issues here and there, um, we come up with some short term solutions to kind of get people access while we figure out the, the longer term. 
Um, let's see, Lisa asks, if we're pulling courses from our CIS, can we combine them in Canvas? Um, we mentioned this a little bit before, uh, and it's a great question about like uh, courses where you might have uh, special ed students that are um, rostered slightly differently than the perhaps the regular ed students. Um, as long as their you know, courses are coming over into Canvas separately, we can do that cross listing and manage that. It will not mess up your sys integration even if you cross list after the fact. So what, it, whether or not they come over cross listed or they come over one to one, uh, we can cross list them and, and not have any issues. Um, D. Clement says he's, they've been using CSV files for rostering for a while now, which is uh, a, a great way to do it as well. Um, he asks, is there a way to delete courses by CSV? The, the short answer is yes. And Rachel can kind of take you through uh, a little bit about how you might format a CSV upload to be able to delete those courses. Yeah, it's it's really just a matter of the status of the course. Uh, when you create courses, you create them uh, with a status of active. Um, I think uh, what I'll do here is pop the CSV uh, documentation into the chat uh, so you can see what the other status options are. Uh, we can make them inactive, we can conclude them, or we can delete them. Um, now, uh, CSV implementations are all a little bit different. Uh, I'm not sure what your SIS is, uh, if you're diffing or not, and so, you know, there are some nuances there, but generally speaking, um, as far as CSV files themselves are formatted, it's just a matter of modifying the status of that course. All right, and then Rachel's going to drop that into the chat, and then I think we've hit uh, our two o'clock time. I appreciate everybody spending time. You guys had a lot of questions today and we were able to kind of go wall to wall with, with those questions, which we appreciate. It makes the time fly by for us. Uh, if you've got questions in the meantime, as you all know, we've got that VVA help. I'm going to drop that into the chat right now at instructure.com. Uh, as a way to reach out to the team if there's any questions about where you're at in your implementation, what sort of things. Jaron mentioned, reach out internally, see about talking to your uh, tech directors who've been our kind of key points of contact thus far, and then eventually we'll transition over to working with academics a little bit more uh, as all of the tech technical stuff gets implemented and taken care of. Um, but if there are questions beyond that, reach out to VVA Help. Uh, and otherwise, we look forward to seeing everybody next Tuesday.